Another day, another change in the Brexit saga. Uh, Danny Palmer joining us from the UK now with more on uh, where we stand with Brexit and the implications that still remain to be seen uh, for the tech industry and really every industry for that matter, Danny. So uh, just tell us where we stand uh, at this very moment. Well, uh, the, the, what was going to happen, because uh, no deal has been passed in the House of Parliament to legislate for uh, Brexit, the Parliament refused to pass the promise to Theresa, May or Theresa May's deal uh, again, uh, they refused it a number of times, um, that meant that there was, the UK was facing a sort of cliff edge with a no prospect of a uh, no deal Brexit on uh, Friday the 12th of April. Um, on late, very, very late on Wednesday night, or, or at a time which was a very early Thursday morning uh, across on, on the continent, um, a new uh, plan emerged with Brexit now being delayed uh, again for the foreseeable future. Um, the new date is, um, is, is, is October 31st, uh, so there's been lots of uh, chatter about a new Halloween uh, Brexit date. Um, there is the uh, caveat that it could happen before then if uh, Theresa May passes a deal in Parliament, but um, a lot of political commentators aren't exactly convinced that will happen. So it looks as if the new date for Brexit is six months down the line. And it's, um, it's an interesting time for you know, tech firms and organisations in all sectors, as you say. Yeah, and you know, uh, Danny, of course, uncertainty is never a, a good thing uh, as companies are not sure where they stand or where they'll be uh, with what happens with Brexit. So talk a little bit about for us in, in terms of the tech sector, what you're hearing. I've seen speaking to quite a few uh, tech uh, sector um, personnel uh, today, and there are a number of key themes that keep cropping up. I mean, the uncertainty is something that is playing havoc with a lot of companies in just terms of being able to do business. There are companies that want to expand their operations, companies that want to know how they can invest their funds uh, in the ne over the course of the next year. And a lot of companies had planned for um, Brexit to have, have happened initially as it was supposed to on the 29th of March. Uh, that hasn't happened and while some companies see this as a positive thing because the longer the UK is uh, within the European Union that means there's more, more sort of freedom of movement or more a, a customs deal it can be a part of it's causing trouble for others because they want to know what's happening in the future but they just they just can't know what's going on I mean organizations have spent you know millions of pounds and thousands of hours trying to prepare for for Brexit and it's been uh, kicked into the grass again, which um, it, has, it has its benefits for them, but it also means that in a few months, we're probably going through this patch of uncertainty again and uh, d d d going through it all once more and trying to figure out how to react to what is going to be, for a lot of organizations, a fundamental uh, change in it on, of how they can do business. Yeah, in, in, uh, in terms of hiring, Danny, this is obviously a, a real sticking point for companies. So expand a little bit on how this is impacting, the uncertainty impacting hiring. Yeah, it, it has done that. A lot, a lot of people I've spoken to have said it's made and it, it's had an impact on this. I mean, London is a well-renowned tech hub. It's still currently the uh, known one of the top, the top tech hub in Europe, but that's coming on so other, other nations like uh, France and Netherlands are trying to challenge that. But one of the reasons that it's got to this place is because organizations can bring in people from, uh, uh, from, from the continent, from the European Union to, to, to do jobs that are required. You know, they can bring in developers, coders, um, software engineers, um, various types of job where, which it, where it is known that in the UK there is a shortage of skills in these areas. So if, if that access to these people is sort of curtailed, a lot of organizations are getting worried about being able to efficiently do business and remain innovative in the future. Because if those people can't come to the work for companies in the UK, they're going to go somewhere else and possibly work for their rivals. Um, and there's also another issue around hiring in general. I mean, organizations like to have certainty about what's going on. But with all the uncertainty around Brexit, a lot of organizations are finding them to put off making some new hires because they don't know the, what the situation is going to be if they can put budget aside for, the, for one, this job or put budget, have to put budget aside for something else because of the uncertainty around Brexit. Um, as mentioned, I mean, a lot, a lot of people in the tech industry are probably 
at the end of the day, quite happy that uh, Brexit still hasn't happened yet, but with it still looming on the horizon, there's still the there's still a lot of uncertainty about what the future holds. All right. So October 31st uh, is the date. Of course, we'll be watching closely between now and then to see what happens. And for more on Brexit and Danny's article, be sure to check out ZDNet. Thank you.